everybody. Welcome back to episode 51 of Talk of Fame Podcast. I'm Kylie. Today we have on the lovely actress and singer Avery White. Thanks so much for coming on, Avery. I'm so happy to have you on. Thank you so much for having me on, Kylie. I love this. Thanks so much. I'm so happy to have you on. So over the last kind of two years, we've been kind of stuck in isolation. So it's something that I did over the last two years we went out time to really do before. Well, I mean, over isolation, it was kind of tough for everybody just trying to figure out how to fill the day and I think how I filled my day was just trying to do more creative mediums you know like painting uh, more writing singing piano playing just trying to you know keep my creative juices flowing in a time when you really couldn't go out and do much but yeah I think I uh, I think I really uh, honed into my creativity and I actually learned how to play a song on the piano which I had never done before so that was really fun yeah absolutely like the pendant and then, like, like you said before, it's basically very difficult for everybody, basically, like, dep- depending on different states, is very mm-hmm. different for everybody. Like, what was kind of, like, the hardest kind of part for you to deal with being inside more, basically, every single day, and you couldn't really do what things you used to do and everything? You know, I'm a very social person. Like, I am yeah. a t- I'm such a social butterfly. Like, every time anybody meets me, I'm like, you're my best friend now. Like, you're yeah. my best friend. I am yeah. so outgoing. So, I think what really was hard was not being able to see my friends, not being able to make new friends. You know, it's it's just difficult, you know, that yeah, kind of social yeah. aspect of it. Yeah, for sure. I'm the same exact way. Like, yeah. I, like, I was very like, a shy girl when I was very young. And now I'm like, same, okay, yeah, yeah now, now I'm a social butterfly. Like, when someone talks to me, I'm like, okay, well, you're a best friend now. So I yeah, now I'm your best friend now. Yeah. <laughs> and so as I kind of mentioned before, you're an actress. Um, what made you kind of want to start doing that? Well, I'm from Texas, so I really didn't know a lot about the acting world when I was younger, but I remember when I was in about second grade, I went to this play and a theater, and I was like, oh my gosh, there's kids on the stage, and they're like my age. That's crazy. I just had never put it together that I could do that. And I, like, I turned to my teacher because it was a field trip, and I was like, can I do that? She's like, of course you can. So I was like, oh my gosh. Uh, like late bulb idea I should be an actor because I had never really seen you know you get that eureka moment it's just like oh my gosh this is what I've been meaning to do my whole life this is this is what I need to do and it just I just remember being so excited to just be on the stage and then that next year they signed me up for classes at that same theater so it was kind of like this amazing moment where I was seeing myself in that role that I had seen before, it was it was incredible. Yeah, for sure. Like as I kind of grew older, like I kind of knew I wanted to be in the industry, but it's still oh, yeah. to do. But he's like, because everyone, no matter how you how old you are, you all, everyone grew up watching TV, television, no matter what it is, ev- everybody, no matter if you've seen like watch television every single day, like I do. Like it's seriously become a big kind of part of our lives. Like, do you oh, have yeah. like anyone that you look up to as a kind of like an actress or just kind of in general? You know, I think one of my favorite actresses is Margot Robbie mm-hmm. because I'm just I'm obsessed with DC. I love superhero movies, and me too. When the first Suicide Squad movie came out, I remember loving it so much because she was such a fantastic actress and. I just, I really gravitated towards that. Harley Quinn's now one of my favorite characters of all time. Like, she's just, she portrays such a strong, powerful character that most women don't get to portray all the time. And it's just, it's wonderful to see that on screen because as a child, or as a teenager, when you're feeling insecure about your role in the world, it's nice to see that women can be powerful, women can have that impact in the world. Yeah, for sure. Like, I was like, I was like, a lot of kids are growing up, like, they're, a lot of people don't see themselves on screen, like, they feel mm-hmm. insecure, they don't so see people like them, like, even they have anxiety, depression, no matter what it is, you don't see himself, like, like them, like, characters like them as a, probably a five-year-old kid, and that's kind of what I kind of grew up with, I don't know if this was for you, but I kind of grew up not seeing myself on screen, like, I felt insecure, I'm like, okay, well, how else is possible, and there are always more men getting roles than women. And of course, so I was yeah. like, okay, well, that's kind of a problem, but it's something mm-hmm. I never realized until I got older. And I'm sure this is for everyone that kind of knows this as like an actor or singer or whatever you're doing. Like people are starting to realize it even more. 
nowadays, but do you have like a favorite like kind of DC kind of movie? We got the episodes of Marvel with all those. Oh movies. man. Um, so I'm a DC and a Marvel fan, so like whenever people talk about DC and Marvel and then they get into little arguments, I'm like, I- I'm the middle ground, I promise, I like both, you know, yeah, but no, I think, yeah, I think my favorite DC movie is probably the uh, Birds of Prey movie, All right. with, uh, yeah, that, that movie was just great, I remember that was one of the last movies I saw in theaters, and it was just, it was wonderful, just mm-hmm. so much fun, and then Harley Quinn leading the gang. I love it so much. She's just great. And the whole cast was majority of women, which was amazing. And every yeah. character, you kind of saw yourself in it, which I love. Like, as you mentioned, you didn't really see yourself growing up in a lot of characters, but, you know, uh, now writers and directors and casting are now focusing on more different stories to tell. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I actually love, have you seen any of the X-Men films? Yes. Yes, oh, I, I love the X-Men films. Those are great. Uh, they're amazing. I'm obsessed with Hugh Jackman, so of course, oh, cool. yeah. I mean, of course. <laughs> but um, you got to play a role in Escaping Capitality, the Karen Robinson story. What was that mm-hmm. experience like for you? Well, I remember getting the breakdown or like the description of the role, and I remember thinking that I needed to research immediately for this role since she was a real person, and I remember researching her and she is just such a strong woman basically she was kidnapped at only 15 years old from her friend's front yard and she managed to escape and that's just it it, thinking about that is just crazy because as a 15 year old you know it's you can't comprehend that at that age but she such a strong woman and I got to meet her she's just super sweet and like super strong super strong woman you should definitely Check out more of her story on her Instagram at Kara Chamberlain Robinson. She's just fantastic. Yeah, for sure. Like, I, as I kind of grew older, I kind of love watching things that are based off a true story. Like, yeah, the mm-hmm. story is basically someone that the, the journey people shouldn't really have to go through in their life. And as a 15 year old, I do not want to experience that. I'm sure for these, me and you are kind of similar in age. So, like, we mm-hmm. do not any basically, basically, uh, basically between us like it's like no one wants to happen like nobody wants to get kidnapped or what go through like she got <laughs> has gone through and like what was kind of that experience though like kind of, like betraying her like were, were, were you scared at all about like, kind of getting the role wrong or kind of feeling like basically kind of feeling insecure about it yeah I did have that insecurity and that back thought where I was like I really need to make sure that I can show a little bit of weakness at time but overflow that weakness with this amount of strength that she has because in researching her she was so just strong in the story and she when she eventually went to the police station the police officers were just astounded because she remembered every single detail didn't even break a sweat not a tear nothing she just relayed every single detail and it was just that was so important to catching this guy but if she hadn't done that, they probably wouldn't have caught him. So that just shows that her strength, you know, can overcome these obstacles. Mm-hmm. I think we can all learn a lesson from that, definitely. Yeah, for sure. If you don't, if now you have look up or hook her up, I definitely recommend learn more about yeah. what she does. But um, you also got to participate in Kelsey Ballerina's music video for <laughs> Homecoming Queen, which is. Not gonna lie, it's our favorite song ever. I seen her con- concert a couple months ago, and she's really amazing. What was your experience like being in her music video? Oh, I'm so glad you're a fan. I love that song too. Like I, I always listen to it all the time whenever I'm feeling like I need a little pick me up. It's just a good song about, you know, if you're insecure, a lot of people are, and you're not alone in that way. You know, a lot of people, even the homecoming queen, cries. You know, like everybody, everybody feels like that in their life and you don't know what someone's going through at home and I remember meeting her for the first time because I was in that scene with her in the music video and I was so nervous because it was one of my first roles I had ever booked so I was like super nervous but she was the sweetest person in the world like we were both from the south so we're talking about that connected on that level but she was just so sweet again she's one of those people that when we meet people we're their best friend immediately like yeah. just talk 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 you know mm-hmm. 
Yeah, and like I've been like a fan of her for like almost like a year now. I got to see her concert a couple months ago, and she is really amazing. I just remember mm-hmm. seeing Homecoming Queen mm-hmm. at the top of my lungs a couple months ago when she went on tour with the Jonas Brothers. I just remember screaming that song at the top of my lungs. But like, <laughs> she, like it's like that song really people can relate to. Yeah. But for me, I was just listening to, to it before we even started. Like, I was really. <laughs> Like everyone that's really insecure, which I was over what you look like, like not everyone is going through what you're going through. Like everyone has things going on behind the scenes. Like, mm-hmm. You might have a smile on your face when you're out with your friends, family, or just doing something outside. But then when you're inside, you're kind of the past. And this shows like you're human. People should be treated the way you want to be treated. And that's kind of how I kind of got grew up these people always blew me for who I was and be, who sister I was and now I'm like do you know how what I'm going through right now like I literally yeah. was going through something a couple of days ago that I know like that's been very hard for me to deal with and it's like no one should bully someone based off of like what they look like or what like they like what they are very passionate about exactly exactly and so, like, do, what is some advice to younger generations that like to be like a actress and singer one day? Yeah, you know, I I love that more younger people are coming into the industry, especially women. It's amazing to see that mm-hmm. as I meet people going on set. I'm like, that's you're you're my age. That's amazing. Like, you're just you're figuring it out so early in life. I love that. So that's what I did. I went so early in life just figuring out who I was. And I love to see more people doing that, creating their own content. It's amazing. But like my advice for somebody would probably be just keep going, keep creating. You know, people are going to tell you that, you know, like that's a, that where you're going in your field, that's a weird field to go. It's not the normal, it's not the normal stream of life, but you just, you don't, if you're going to be in this, this type of world, you're going to have to take the uncharted path, the untaken path, the untaken road. And I just, I would love to just see everybody's creativity and just everybody's amazing projects. Like just keep going is what I would say. Just keep going. For sure. Definitely. And so the final question is, you also got to play a role in Darman. What was kind of like the process like for you to get that role in your experience like that? Well, I'd seen the audition for the Darman videos and I'd heard of them before because I'd left, they're just so full of positivity and that's like what I'm all about. I love it. I love the endings are always so sweet. They're just, they're just nice endings, which you don't really see a lot, you know, on these YouTube platforms. It's like, it's good that kids are able to watch and maybe even grownups like me, I watch it all the time, are able to watch these nice stories and learn a little bit during the day, you know, mm-hmm. but um his videos are just super sweet and I remember booking it and I got so excited I was just so ready to be a part of spreading this positivity and I just love it yeah for sure but especially during quarantine positive positively it's been very kind of difficult oh, yeah. difficult thing since people are people are basically struggling with anxiety mm-hmm. depression since we're basically stuck at home now for about what is it like three years two years now <laughs> Man, I don't even know anymore. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't keep track. Anymore. I don't keep. I don't keep time anymore. Off. Days are days are coming and going, right? Yeah, it's co- going, coming, going. That's crazy. <laughs> like I, for me, I don't know if this was like for you, but I literally thought it would take a couple of weeks. This then it'll be over. With. Oh yeah, me too. I remember I was super scared first time I went to the grocery store for the first time. Oh man, such a scary mm-hmm. experience. I was like, oh no, is this what it's gonna be like forever? Yeah, and like, I was thinking, like, I haven't even left the house in weeks, so I didn't even leave. I was like, okay, well, uh, like, first time I left the house was when, like, my dad went to pick up some food, and I literally just sat there in the car, and I'm like, okay, I don't want to go inside, like, I'm good, like, I think there's a lot one person to go with, so I was like, okay, well, go in, I'll stay, I just stay in the car, whatever you want to do, I'll just stay in the car. Like I was like, I don't really care. Like I don't want to get COVID, even though I got COVID a couple months ago. Like uh, I'll probably get COVID at some point. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, definitely. But it's it's good that we're we're able. Everybody together is experiencing this stuff, and we're all just you know that was what brought us together at the beginning of lockdown. So everybody's experiencing this. We're all in this together, and you know we're gonna we're gonna keep going. You know, like I give advice to people who are doing creative things in the industry, just keep going. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I totally agree. So I just want to thank you so much for coming yes. on the podcast. It was so great speaking with you. You're amazing. 
Oh, and thank so, you so much, Kylie. Let's speak, let's speak soon for sure. Thanks for coming on. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you so much. Of course. Absolutely. Thank you. Bye. Bye.